You're listening to Popstar Conversations, taking you inside with your favorite musical artists. This week, Chuck and I are sitting here with Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees. Barry, welcome to the show. Barry Gibb, welcome to the show. On this album, In the Now, how does it feel being a solo artist? All four brothers wanted to be solo artists. I think that's that's a fact, you know. And that really never went away. Robin always wanted to be a solo artist. Um, Andy, of course. To me, we were all the Bee Gees. So, because um, for me, it stood for Brothers Gibb and... And Andy was, was our brother. So it wasn't, even though we were all doing different things at different times, um, it's, uh, all of our personal desires was to have individual attention. I think that's just the way groups are. And I've seen it with so many groups now over the years that, uh, that it is a truism. There is no such thing. There's nothing natural about being in a group. And with a group of brothers, it's got to be more binding. Groups who are not brothers do have a tendency to be able to replace each other where brothers can't do that you know uh, you have arguments and 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 the next day there's great love and and there's a lot of laughter and hysterics and the next day you're arguing again so it's brothers and sisters really uh, the incredible the incredible tension of always being together but not living together socially we all had separate lives really their friends were i didn't know their friends and they didn't know my friends so there was this drive to be individual, even though you were in a group. And I think I've seen that with other groups too. And the album Now Voyager, it's the only solo album you released. And, and um, it was just something that was my brothers didn't want me to do. I think it was brothers, you know, it's the way things are. And they always did try to uh, keep us bound together somehow because... To them, that's where the success was. If we had success, it was because of the three of us. And, and I agreed with that too, you know. And I made this album, and then I felt really uncomfortable about it. And, and, and I think that the record company then began to feel uncomfortable about it. Robert Stigwood really didn't want me to put a solo album out. Robin was putting solo albums out and not, getting, not really getting the, uh, the feedback he wanted. So for all of us, it, that was not a good period. And th- we've had a lot of not good periods. It's, you know, um, so now Voyager really didn't didn't pan out to be a successful album. I did another album later on, which be- which no, which was not which became the soundtrack of a movie called Hawks. Yes, with the song Moonlight Madness. Uh, uh, it was um, Moonlight Madness and uh, Letting Go, which Barbara Streisand recorded two years ago. And so I think ultimately there was some good stuff on that album. So with this album, In The Now, is this you moving on, or are you keeping in the Bee Gees tradition? It's both. It's both. It's it's getting past the idea, and I'll never get past it, really. I understand that now. I always feel that my brothers are sitting next to me. I always feel that... I always hear their opinions. Um, I often see them, and I think it's probably me, because I'm probably mad. I, I often see them walking across a room, you know, and you know this we were a group for 45 years so you compare that to the beatles 10 years you know and, and you think well you know uh, i see them in the night I, I see robin walk across the room i see uh, my wife has seen andy uh, in the top floor of our house here and and that just goes on that doesn't stop and, that, and my dreams my dreams are intense always about always about and all the three of us are younger. They look, they all look fantastic in my dreams. It's almost like we never got older. They look about now, but they look great, you know? So they're very vivid to the point that I don't really believe their dreams. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but, but they're very vivid to me. And it's a very spiritual experience every time. Sometimes I wake up really happy because it was a great dream. And sometimes I wake up really angry because they're mad at me. You know, and so I don't know where they come from, but the dreams don't seem to stop. They come around just about once a week, maybe more. Yeah, different moments in life. Not the same arguments, definitely new arguments. After Robin passed, I sat around for about six months just using the remote and being in that frame of mind and not really wanting to, not knowing where to go, not knowing what to do. 
I'd always envisioned being a, a solo artist. At that point, I didn't really want to be in the business. I was ready to hang my hat up and, you know, there must be something else in life that's fun, you know? I, yeah. <laughs> Car racing. <laughs> no. Um, but in the end, there wasn't anything else for me. I can't do anything else. I mean, for me, it's, 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 it's about writing songs and, uh, and being on stage, being live, uh, being, uh, performing pure. And that was great about Glastonbury is that I got to just perform without any tricks, any technology, uh, things like that. So I, I needed to just get on with it. I thought I've got to live for the sake of living and I can't live because everyone died. Uh, and, and I can't live their death, you know? And she walked into the lounge one day and she just said, you know, get off your ass, you know? Um, you, can't live, you can't live on everyone's death. And, and, uh, and that shook me up, that shook me up. And she always did. I mean, she, 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 she always said the right thing at the wrong time. <laughs> That's why your marriage has lasted. She was always the, she was always right about a lot of things. But, you know, when you live with someone like she lived with me, she saw things I didn't see. So, you know, that's typical of relationships. You've always been praised by your peers, but the press has not always been so supportive. Yeah, but I've seen so many artists over the years that were sneered at, that have become immortal. You know, um, people like Prince, people like David Bowie, who at certain times in his life was not popular, you know. Uh, now there's a reverence, you know. Maybe you have to die <laughs> um, for people to go, wait a minute, we should check that music out. I'm playing catch up with Prince, you know. I, I'm, I don't know why he went away 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Now I know, you know, he was in search of, 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 of getting himself fixed. He, he was not, he, I don't, I think his hips were bad. Whatever it was, whatever it was, um, I'm playing catch up with that now, you know? I'm playing catch up with everyone who's gone. And, and, and more than ever now, I'm, I went to seeing how people were criticized and critiqued, always when you're alive. But when you're gone, they'll go, hmm, I wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it estimated that you have sold over 220 million albums? Well, that's a fictional number too. That was Rob, that was a fixture Robin had in his head, and I don't know where he got it because if you can tell, if you can show me a record company that will tell the artist how many records they have sold, you, that's going to be a, that's going to be something I'm ready to listen to. <laughs> because if somebody tells me we've sold 220 million records, I say, okay, where's the check? <laughs> you know. It's, I don't know how many, how many records have we sold with other artists? I got no idea, you know, the songs that we wrote that were successful for other people. There are no numbers on that, you know. So yeah, okay, I, I'll accept the 220, <laughs> but I have no idea what the number is. There's a song in this record, uh, The End of the Rainbow. Did you write that for your brother Robin? Yes, um, I sang the verse to him when he was in a coma in the last two weeks of his life. I, I sat in that cubicle with him, That's okay. and uh, and I sang that first verse to him. And the great thing about that particular song is, I th what I was what I was doing in that song was telling him that there really was no such thing as time. That to me, we were we, we it wasn't about time for us. It was about just always doing what we loved. And and then later on, I realized that. When we grew up in Australia, it was always a different day than it was anywhere else in the world. And so really, maybe subconsciously, I was writing about us growing up in Australia because when I went to Australia, it was already tomorrow. So today is tomorrow, um, springtime is summer, and the end of the rainbow is here. That became, that became the be all and everything for, for, uh, for, the all, for all four of us. There's a line in that song, adios amigos, Goodbye, my friend. That sort of says it all. Well, of course it is. It, it, it's me saying, saying, it's all right. It's all right. You know, don't be angry. You know, um, uh, we all had our, our anger moments and our issues. And, and, and uh, it's all right now. It's all right now. And, and I did sing some of it to him. I don't know if you heard it. But, but, uh, but I have every intention of making that the end of the album. 
on this album you're writing with your sons. Is history repeating itself? It's very much like the same thing. It's very much like the same thing. We, we, uh, I, I'm working with my sons, and it's the same as working with my brothers. You know, I'll bring an idea. I'm an idea type. That's what I always did. So I'll bring an idea, and then all three of us will flush it out and figure out what it is. And you get a great chorus. Okay, now we work backwards. Let's find out how we get there. And and it's a pleasure. It's it's you know it's it's like uh, when I was a producer. I produced a lot of records with Albie Galutin and Carl Richardson, and that was that was another trio. So it was like I've always enjoyed being in a team. I've always enjoyed being able to do what I do best and let people who do their best do it. You know, don't try to control everything. Something will happen that's really good, and wait for that moment. Albie came up with the uh, the riff for "Staying Alive." I couldn't have. I never thought of it. I just thought of "Staying Alive" and the song. But he came up with the riff, and 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 if you let everyone do what it, what it is they do best, that's what happens, you know. Being a team. Are you playing tennis after your health issues? Played tennis for ten years, uh, in between the age of forty and fifty. I played a lot of tennis because I, I beca it became a passion for me. I had to play every day, and I think therein where, is where the problem really started for me. You know, my knees and my ankles, and and uh, I just wore them out. And I and I and I was the worst tennis player in the world. So, so that should tell you something, you know. Um, I even had pro am tournaments, pro am tournaments. But I was the worst player in the world. So people would just wait for me to serve so they could laugh, you know. And I played with a lot of great players, and and but I was no good. I was no good. I had fantastic forehand every ten minutes. Nothing else. <laughs> just sort of this incredible forehand. And I started to get that McEnroe from the hip backhand. And that started to work. So oh, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. No, I'm not. <laughs> Pretty bad. But that's that's really where all those joint problems came from, and the back surgery. I had back surgery in 1992, just at the time my daughter Ali was born. So I'm visiting her in an incubator at the hospital because she was born really early, and I'm in a brace. So I'm 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 struggling around to see my baby, and I can hardly move. You know. So I remember, that's vivid, that's 1992. With this new record, are you trying to reclaim your momentum? Well, I, I, I think, yes, I think I am. I think um, I, I, still, I still have to prove something to myself. I still have to um, convince myself that whatever it is I always did, I still do, you know? And yes, there will be success, and yes, there will be failures, but I'm used to that too, you know? I keep my feet on the ground, um, reject anything that re that involves ego, and 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 live for the sake of living, you know. And keep the music going, and keep my keep all my brother's music going, keep it all going, if I can. Throughout your career, have you felt misunderstood? And now this is an opportunity to show your creativity. Oh, thank you. I, that, that's what I'm trying to do. I, not not consciously, because then I don't think I would have succeeded. I think what you've got to do is, it's like you're on stage. If you think, if you think, it's not going to work. You have to stop thinking. When you start singing on stage, thinking is the worst thing you can do. You know, and, and every 15, 20 seconds at Glastonbury, I would start thinking again. And start, my God, the whole world is watching this. And you can't do that. You know, you, 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 you've got to obliterate that, this concept of thought. And, and everything comes to you naturally if you actually mean what you're singing. You've got, to, you've got to mean what you're singing. And that's what I learned from being on stage. Don't think. I've got to ask you, there was an interview you did with Rolling Stone magazine. And it was a story about there's a bridge in Miami. I, qu I can't quite get this right, but it was all about the song Jive Talking. Can you explain that to us? But the real story is that there, there's a lo lot of bridges in Miami, but there's one bridge between Criteria Studios, which is now the Hit Factory, and where we lived on North Bay Road. So coming home every night, we were working with Arif Mardin on the main course album. We didn't have a jive talking, and we, and we were doing just about getting started, really. We were coming home one night, and the same bridge we'd always go over would go... And that hit me every night, you know, until one night coming back, I go, and I started singing, 
to that click. And after about a week or two, we got home around midnight and we finished the song by about one o'clock in the morning because uh, I think we were high, you know. We finished the song, <laughs> those were the days. And uh, the next day, the, some of the lyrics were totally off the wall. So, so Reef said, no, no, you can't, you know, you're singing about lying. You're singing about somebody bullshitting you, you know. Um, write about that because we'd miss, we loved the title Jive Talking, but we didn't quite understand that it was about lying, you know? So we had to rewrite a lot of ly lyrics based on that. Getting back to this record, I had noticed that there was a theme in a few of the songs. Are you reflecting on the 60s Bee Gees? Um, no, you know what I'm doing? I'm reflecting. It's my opinion of life today. It's my opinion of culture today. You'll hear that in some of the songs. It's my opinion of religion. It's my opinion of um, of uh, all the decades we've existed in. Star-Crossed Lovers is really my, my Carole King song um, because I think she was the most melodic songwriter of our time. And Barry, one last question before we go. After all of your experiences, your career, your life, do you feel that you've lived life to its fullest? Well, that, I think that's the lesson. That's the lesson. You never forget. They're all, my, my, my guys are always with me. My brothers are always with me. Uh, but I am having a, a wonderful time. I'm having a wonderful time uh, getting to know artists I never knew, getting, getting to be able to say hello and talk to those people that I most admire that in the, in the days of great criticism, we never got to talk to, you know? Now, they come and talk to me, and, I, and, and, and I'm loving that. Barry, thank you very much for coming on the show. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, man. Barry, it's been a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you again for listening to Pop Star Conversations. Be sure to click the subscribe button below and hit the red bell so that you'll be notified of our next exclusive interview. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for listening to Popstar Conversations. Please join us again for another conversation with your favorite musical artist.